Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good uh, Friday afternoon. <coughs> holy, holy day. Uh, holy, holy events. Uh, we gather to, uh, to reflect, uh, to uh, be reminded of a God who bleeds, a uh, God who loves, a God who dies for us. We begin our service with our opening hymn, hymn 440. And we sing uh, verses 1, 2, and 3, hymn 4, 4. Acted by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. 
and as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities, Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned, every one, to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shepherd is silent. So he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And, for, and as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people, and they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has to put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring, and he shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the, shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death, and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many, and makes intercession for the transgressors. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We follow the passion of our Lord according to St. John. It's the white insert in your bulletin. This is the historic uh, gospel passion reading for Good Friday. Uh, the hymn verses are interspersed and printed uh, in the white insert. Uh, we begin with the first verse of O Sacred Head. Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, having procured a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that would happen to him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. So he asked them again, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So 
If you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. Of those whom you gave me, I have lost not one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Melchius. So Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews that it would be expedient that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he entered with Jesus into the court of the high priest, but Peter stood outside at the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the servant girl who kept watch at the door and brought Peter in. The servant girl at the door said to Peter, You are also one of the disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in the synagogues and in the temple, where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said these things, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, Is that how you have answered? Is that how you answered the high priest? Jesus answered him, If what I have said is wrong, Bear witness about the wrong. But if what I have said is right, why do you strike me? Annas then sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself, so they said to him, You also are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Peter again denied it, and at once a rooster crowed.
then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled, but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting, that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. took Jesus and flogged him. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he is the son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer, so Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you know that I have the authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given to you from above. 
Therefore he who delivered me over to you has the greatest sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement and an Aramaic Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold, your king. And they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross, it read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, This was to fulfill the scripture which says, they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, 
Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But... One of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness, his testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. And again, another scripture says, After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new tomb, in which no one had yet been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. Here ends the passion of our Lord. We join in our sermon hymn, hymn 451.
Behold the man. Behold the man on the cross. This is his purpose. This is what today, Good Friday, is all about. This is why God is man. This is why the second person of the triune God has taken on human flesh. It's for this reason. Behold, this man on the cross, bleeding, gasping, suffering, dying. Behold the man, says Pilate. Behold his hands, which the night before were washing his disciples' feet, and now they're pinned with nails to the rough cross beam. Behold the hands that had scooped Adam out of the dirt. They're now stained with blood and dirt. Behold the fingers with which he touched lepers. Fingers that he stuck into the ears of a deaf man. Fingers that he used to pick up bread and declare it to be his body. Now these fingers, these hands jerk uncontrollably every time he has to pull himself up on the nails through his wrists to take a breath. And this is why God has hands. Behold the man. Behold his skin that has been shredded from all the flogging. The skin on his back, a bloody pulp that scrapes up and down on the cross as he struggles to breathe. But this is why God has skin. Behold his knees, skinned and bruised from falling under the weight of the cross that he had to carry for a time out to this place of the skull. But this is why God has legs. Behold the man. Behold his feet, nailed to the cross, bearing his weight as he dies. Behold the feet that, that walked from town to town as he taught, as he healed the sick, as he preached the good news of our release from captivity to sin and death. Behold those feet that Mary had anointed with expensive ointment and washed with her tears and wiped with her hair. Behold those same feet are now bound in place, enduring stabbing pain as they push up on the nail that's pinning them in place. Behold his heel, which in this act of dying is crushing the head of the serpent and destroying the kingdom of Satan, answering and paying for all of mankind's sinful rebellion. This is why God has feet. Behold the man, behold his head, Blood flowing down from every point where the thorns have pierced his skull. Behold, the head that should be rightly crowned with majesty and glory. But now behold the head over which has been hung a sign, listing the charge, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. But this, my friends, is why God has a head. Behold the man, behold his face fresh swelling and bruising from the blows from the chief priests, officers, and from the soldiers. Behold the eyes that had once had looked in mercy and compassion on the crowds, on the disciples, on the sick. Behold his lips, which had spoken words of absolution, but now are dry and cracked from a deeper thirst than we will ever know. Behold those cheeks that were kissed by his mother. Behold how his face now contorts in agony. But this is why God has a face. Behold this 
man. Behold his lungs as they slowly fill with fluid. Behold the lungs that breathe the breath of life into Adam's nostrils. Behold the lungs that in this hanging posture cannot exhale without the man pulling up his body on those nails to open his airway. Behold the lungs that expel one final breath as he cries out, it is finished. This is why God has lungs. Behold the man, behold his bones, which remain unbroken throughout this whole ordeal. Behold the reason every sacrifice, every Passover lamb, every bull for a burnt offering, every scapegoat, every ram, every turtle dove had to be healthy and intact with no bones broken, no defigurement, a perfect specimen of its kind. Behold the soldiers who with their clubs shatter the legs of the other thieves, but refrain from doing the same. To Jesus, this is why God has unbroken bones. Behold the man, behold his side, into which the soldier thrusts his spear, causing a river of blood and water to pour forth, confirming that he is truly and completely dead. His heart has stopped. Behold the deep sleep of death that has come upon this man on the sixth day of the week. And behold the material from the side of the crucified man that God will fashion into his bride, into the church, give her to him when he wakes. Behold the side of this man, which Thomas will be invited to shove his hand into. This all is why God has a side. Behold the man, behold the blood that pours even from his lifeless body, staining the cross, spilling into the dirt, reddening the soil, watering creation. Behold the blood that he first shed as an eight-day-old boy, undergoing the sign by which all Jewish boys are made Israelites. Behold the blood for which the crowd thirsted, ironically asking for exactly what they needed. His blood be on us and on our children. Behold that blood that was foreshadowed on every day of atonement, when the blood of the sacrifice was splattered on the mercy seat, on the altar, and on the people. Behold the blood he gave to his disciples in the cup the night before, telling them its function shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Yes, behold the blood that proves that this God was also truly, fully, Man, a brother in blood to each of us sinners. This is the blood by which this eternal high priest enters once for all into the most high place, giving sinful men access to a holy God. This, my friends, is why God has blood. And this, my friends, it is no accident. And it's not a tragedy. We rightly so call this Good Friday. Jesus himself had said, no one takes my life from me. I lay it down of my own accord. This is why God is man. It's not to teach us how to be good, not to show us the right way to live, not to be a perfect example that we should follow, not to impart his wise teaching. No, God is man.
for this purpose, that he can die for you. God has a life that he can lay it down in exchange for yours. The perfect sacrifice, the perfect redeemer. There on the cross for you, behold the man. Amen. We bring our offerings to the Lord and also ask that you would sign the friendship folder uh, in your pew.
that our Heavenly Father would surround them with caring friends and renew the love that they have lost. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. The man Jesus experienced thirst. For all those whose lives are focused on relief from pain and suffering, from illness or addiction, for those who are hospitalized, those who await surgery, those who recover from surgery, that according to his gracious plans, God would bring about for them healing, relief, and health to body and mind. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. The man Jesus loved his followers to the end by serving even as their physical servant. For all who serve in homes and hospitals, all in the armed forces and in police and emergency and fire departments and all public servants in government, that God would protect, strengthen, and guide them for the good of the whole society, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. The man Jesus fled and died. For all who understand Jesus only as a moral teacher or an example of pious living, that the Holy Spirit would open their hearts to see that Jesus' death is the reason he became man, and to trust that in dying he did everything necessary for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. The man Jesus was buried. For all who fear death and all who are in mourning, that the Holy Spirit grant them faith to see the death of all who trust in Christ as a sleep from which they shall awaken. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> the man Jesus physically rose triumphant over death. For all artists and musicians, poets and writers who help us express Christian hope and encourage our joyful celebrating, anticipating the day when faith gives way to sight, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, Heavenly Father, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, for the sake of your Son and our brother, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Pater, Apes, Autois, Ugar, Poidesen, T, Poiusen. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do.
Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. 